5. Today we are going to demonstrate how we can evaluate various abdominal lymph nodes with endoscopic ultrasound. So we will learn how to focus on periportal, peripancreatic, iotocable lymph nodes, periotic lymph nodes or lymph nodes which are around the superior mesenteric artery or superior mesenteric vein. These nodes can be evaluated from proximal stomach, distal stomach, first part of duodenum and second part of duodenum. First we focus on periportal nodes that can be seen from proximal stomach. Our left hand should be facing up. Our scope is in proximal stomach. Then by using up knob we can scan left lobe of liver. Then we give a clockwise torque by raising our left hand. We can see here formation of portal vein. This linear structure which is coming out from the liver is portal vein. Above and below the portal vein is periportal region. This region is a common area for enlargement of lymph nodes mainly in tuberculosis, lymphoma or sarcoidosis and various other conditions. If lymph node is above the portal vein, when we see lymph node periportal region from stomach, if the node is above the portal vein, it can be easily targeted from the transgastric route. But sometimes lymph nodes are below the portal vein. In that scenario, we have to go either by transvenous route. Easier option is we go to first part of duodenum. Our scope is in long loop. We wedge our scope at junction of first and second part of duodenum. Then we give an anti-clockwise torque by dropping our left hand. That way we can see liver, we can see gallbladder which is close to probe. Now we are seeing a linear structure which is portal vein. So again area which is around the portal vein is periportal area. Here we can see gallbladder and here we can see this is the portal vein. And around the portal vein we can see various lymph nodes. And here we can see a large node. In fact, we can see conglomerating lymph nodes suggesting a diagnosis of tuberculosis. When we saw from stomach, this node was below portal vein. But when we came to duodenum, this node is seen between the probe and the portal vein. So this node can be easily sampled from first part of duodenum. Next is evaluation of peripancreatic nodes, which is done from proximal stomach. Trick is first to localize portal vein and when we see portal vein we can localize part of pancreatic head and pancreatic body. So here we can see pancreatic body. So once we see pancreatic body we give a clockwise torque by raising our left hand and we can scan pancreas to body and tail region. The nodes which are around the pancreas are peripancreatic lymph nodes. In this patient, we are not seeing any node in peripancreatic region. Otherwise, these nodes can be easily sampled from transgastric route. Next, we focus on lymph nodes around SMA and SMB. So, first again, we localize portal vein. Here we can see left lobe and then we give a clockwise torque to see portal vein. This linear structure is portal vein. Portal vein will continue as SMB on left side of screen. So if you push scope from this position, we will be tracing towards the superior mesenteric vein. Here we can see we are pushing scope inside and we are tracing portal vein as SMB. From SMB, if you rotate clockwise, we can see SMA. So nodes feature around SMA and SMB on CT scan. They can be easily targeted either from mid gastric body or distal gastric body. So, here we are seeing two linear vessels, these are SMA and SMV, and we can see there are no significant loads in this area. Next is evolution of periotic nodes, which can be done either from proximal stomach or second part of duodenum. For evolution from proximal st stomach, first we localize junction of SMV and portal vein. Here we can see a linear vascular structure which is SMV and portal vein and from here we can see that splenic vein is joining with 
SMV which is coming from left side and after union of SMV and splenic vein we can see portal vein on right side. So if we see SMV and give a clockwise torque we can see SMA. If we trace back SMA by clockwise torque and pulling back it will join the iota. Here we can see SMA joining with iota. This is SMA again joining with iota. Proximal to origin of SMA from iota will be origin of C left trunk. Now in this frame we can see SMA and C left trunk both are arising from iota and this region is a common region for enlargement of metastatic lymph nodes or for lymphoma. So nodes are which are around the aortic trunk or periotic nodes we can also see nodes which are around SMA and C leg axis from this position. Another station for periotic and paracaval lymph nodes is the second part of duodenum. We go to junction of first and second part of duodenum. Shorten the scope, we go across the papilla. Once we go across the papilla by shortening our equendoscope, we can see here left kidney. So, once we see left kidney, we should rotate scope clockwise. Once we see left kidney, we rotate scope clockwise and we can see a large linear vessel which is inferior vena cava and we can see lymph nodes in paracaval region. Once we see IVC and if we give a clockwise torque, we can see iota. We should be descending iota which is slightly away from the IVC. So we can see your upper uh, structure is IVC and with a clockwise torque below the IVC, we should be able to see iota you see ivc and below ivc is iota and we can see between the ivc and iota there are multiple lymph nodes so these lymph nodes are paracaval paraiotic and iotocaval lymph nodes that completes examination of abdominal lymph nodes with linear equendoscopy if you have any comment suggestion you can type in comment box below Thanks for watching this video.